Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship on this, the seventh Sunday of the Epiphany. Uh, Today, as we uh, come to worship, we uh, continue uh, in our series through Matthew. We come to Matthew chapter 14, uh, a couple of miracle stories uh, that happens there. Um, The feeding of the 5,000 and walking on water. That's where we're at for today. Uh, Please be sure to fill out a connection card. Let us know that you're worshiping with us today. I know you're probably wondering what the heck I'm wearing here. Uh, I, it, when I was in seminary, I, I was sarcastic and called it the poncho. Uh, it, it's actually, it's a chasuble. And before, before all the big to-dos about, about, um, about vestments and all that, uh, the chasuble served a very practical purpose. And I thought today was just such a day that warranted wearing it. And the, those big, drafty, cold cathedrals of Europe, the chasuble served as an extra layer so that the pastor could be warm as well. So I figured it's an appropriate day to pull it out. I do not normally wear a chasuble, but it's cold. So let's stand and let's get the blood flowing and let's join in our opening hymn, number 548 in your hymnal. Thanks. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Generous Father, you sent your Son Jesus to be the true bread from heaven, which gives life to the world. Give us this bread so that he would live in us and we in him. We pray through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. B through. No, it didn't. It's. Uh, I'll get it. Yeah, it was just done. Yeah. OK, 
Okay, the first reading is in Psalm, verse, um, Psalm verse, or chapter 145, verses 1 through 4, and then 35, 31 through 35. A reading from Psalms. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall laud your work to another and shall declare your mighty acts. And there is no 31 through 35 on chapter 145. Did this not get... Okay. He ranks the first reading. Alleluia, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Lord, to whom shall we go? You are the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel on this seventh Sunday of Epiphany comes from St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat into a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd. And he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. He said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up by the mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone. But by, the time, but by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, and the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came, walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to stink, he cried out, Lord, save me! Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace be unto you from God the Father and from His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our reading begins, Matthew tells us that Jesus had received some news, and it is this news that sets in motion uh, his travel uh, and these two miraculous events that we hear about this morning. Back in chapter 11, John, as in John the Baptist, had been arrested, and the news which Matthew brings uh, to us in the first part of chapter 14 is that Herod 
had John the Baptist beheaded in prison, and now reports have come about Jesus have come to Herod's attention, and Herod has come to believe that John has been resurrected in the person of Jesus. Herod was not an altogether with it guy. Neither was his father. The fact that this news causes Jesus to withdraw from Nazareth for a time suggests to us that Jesus might have worried that Herod was now going to come after him. Having killed his cousin, now maybe he's going to come after him. Thereby attempting to pay, play spoiler to Jesus' uh, messianic plans, of his, his plans to go to Jerusalem and to the cross. It also seems that this is the first time Jesus has heard about his cousin's death, and so it may simply be that he needs a little time away from all the crowds to deal with the death of his cousin. So Jesus withdraws to what many translations identify as a deserted or solitary place. The word that's used here, though, is eramon, which Matthew used to talk about the vocation of John as being the voice who cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, and used again after Jesus' baptism when it says that Jesus was led out into the wilderness uh, by the Spirit to be tempted. Well, what does it matter if he went to uh, a deserted place or went to the wilderness? It probably doesn't matter a whole lot, except that Matthew's trying to direct our attention and prepare us, his readers, for what's about to come. Matthew's trying to direct our biblical imagination, preparing our hearts and our minds for the miracle he's about to tell us about. When we hear about the wilderness, our minds and the minds of Matthew's earliest re, uh, hearers and readers should automatically go back to Exodus, right? The 40 years in the wilderness uh, following, uh, the, following them leaving Egypt. And what was the first miracle that God performed when they had uh, crossed through the Red Sea? It was another bread event. Manna, yeah, manna. Uh, the people needed something to eat, and so God provides manna in the wilderness. God himself provided them with their daily bread. Jesus goes to a wilderness place. The crowds follow him. The poor guy just finds out that his cousin's dead. He probably thinks that he's next on Herod's list, so he goes to a wilderness place, somewhere that's deserted, that he might have some quiet time. And I'm sure that at one time or another, you have needed such quiet time, right? You've probably needed that. You've, we've all done that. We've had a busy day, perhaps an emotionally draining day, perhaps just received some heavy news, or just needed some quiet time alone, only to have your kids come searching, crying through the house, trying to find you. Mom, mom, we need you. And you're thinking, perhaps even hollering back, I need five minutes, just five minutes, <laughs> right? Or, go find your father. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, uh, a commercial for, uh, for Day Cold, Night Cold, right? About, uh, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, on the one side... Uh, mom comes in, she comes down this white hallway, you can hear a phone ringing in the background, it sounds like she's at work, uh, opens the door and says, uh, I, I think the, the girl in there's name was Amanda or something like that, Amanda, I'm going to need a day off. And the camera pans over and the person she's talking to is her little probably four or five year old daughter. And on the flip side of that is, uh, is the husband. It's Julie, I'm sorry, I'm going to need to take a sick day. And the camera pans over to Julie, who's dressed in her wedding gown with her flower girl by her side, right? Uh, moms and dads don't get to take a day off. Jesus doesn't get to take a day off, does he? Jesus doesn't tell the crowds that he's going to take a sick day or a personal day. He doesn't tell them to go find some other miracle worker 
or to come back later. But what does he do? The text tells us that he had compassion on them. He had compassion on them, and he began to cure their sick. He put his own needs to the side for a time, and he tends to the needs of the crowds who followed. As the evening was advancing, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, this is a wilderness place. We have that, we have that, uh, that uh, Aramon word again. This is a wilderness place place and they encourage Jesus to send the people away so that they may buy food for themselves which actually looks like a charitable act right these people need to eat Jesus let them have some time you know what you know what happens when you give preachers a microphone right you might never get it back although in this case Jesus is not preaching he's healing nonetheless the point still stands I think they send them out to buy food. But what does Jesus do? He reteaches them that petition of the Lord's Prayer that we heard just a few weeks ago. Father in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Hmm? And as God caused the manna in the wilderness to appear with the dew, so too Jesus from five loaves and two, of bread and two fish fed the entire crowd. And the text tells us that there were 5,000 men plus women and children. I mean, it's like the entire city of Tehachapi, was, which I know is not the biggest city, but still, that's a lot of people to feed. It's like the entire city of Tehachapi was out there, and Jesus fed the entire city off of five loaves and two fish with baskets left over. This should be a... This should not be a total surprise to us when, because last week we heard a parable about bread too, right? The kingdom of heaven, Jesus said, is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour. What else would we expect to have happened with this bread but for it to expand and to grow? This is what Jesus does. He feeds our bodies. He causes the kingdom to grow. He feeds our bodies and he feeds our souls. He saw the whole need of the crowd that had followed him, and he healed both their sick and he, fed the, he filled their stomachs. He satisfied their needs. As the psalmist declares, the Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds those who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand in sat satisfying the desire of every living thing. The food that this, the psalmist mentions here is not merely the bread and fish kind of food that satisfies the stomach. It is food that, does, that satisfies the desires of the whole person. Jesus is the living manifestation of the manna from heaven. He is the living water that swells up to eternal life. He is the light that shines in the darkness that darkness cannot overcome. When Jesus finished serving this huge crowd, the text says that immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead and of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And having dismissed the crowds, now he goes up to the mountain to pray. Now, having served the needs of this crowd, he gets his quiet time that he was looking for. Finally, he gets some alone time, some quiet solitude to deal with the death of his cousin. And having been renewed in the spirit by, the, by, his, uh, by his time spent with the Father, Jesus now walks down the mountain. And if it wasn't enough to walk down the mountain, he continues walking. And like an amphibious vehicle, he just keeps on walking right out onto the lake. Many of people want to go to great lengths to explain how this may have actually happened. Well, maybe there was a sandbar out there that Jesus knew about, they say. But the boat was there, right? And these are experienced fishermen. They knew this lake like the back of their hand. And they would not have gone to a place where there was a sandbar where their boat may have just run up, uh, run up onto and been, gotten stuck. 
Jesus walks on the water. What more can we say about that? Our enlightened minds do not like this. Our enlightened minds, they don't like this. There's no way it could actually have happened, we think. But there's no way that Jesus could have fed 5,000 people on five loaves and two fishes either. There's no way, no other way to explain the miraculous healings he performed. I am all about faith-seeking understanding. There, there's, something of, there's something wonderful in, in, in exploring how things may have happened. Uh, it's fascinating, like, uh, for example, um, uh, the, the star of Bethlehem. Uh, it could have been Venus, Mercury, and Mars all coming into a line together. S some histor fascinating historical scientific inquiry. Or maybe God put a special star in the sky. It's not beyond him to do that. But sometimes it's worth taking a miracle for what it is. A miracle. A revealing of the mystery and awesome power of God to do the inexplicable. Jesus, the Son of God, walked out onto the lake. He walked on the water. As I read this passage this week, my mind couldn't help but go back to Genesis 1, the very beginning of, of the Bible in those opening lines where it, it talks about how in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and it says that the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the deep. It hovered over the face of the deep. It hovered over the waters. Here, Jesus, the Son of God now, is hovering, as it were, over the waters. He's displaying His authority as Lord over the creation. Now comes Peter. Well, the whole disciples, they see him out there, right? They, they, see, they see something out there. It's been very stormy, and uh, they've been blown off course. And they, and, and they know, their enlightened minds know that you can't, a person cannot walk on water, so they assume it to be a ghost that's coming to them. And Jesus, knowing that they are afraid... Hearing their cries, says, fear not. Do not be afraid. And Peter says, uh, the, the, the word there uh, in Greek is ego eimi, which is a very important word, especially in John's gospel. This ego eimi phrase is the phrase that Jesus uses to say, I am the bread of life. I am the living water. I am the way, the truth, and the life. This ego a me is the, in, is the Greek form of the holy name of God. I am that I am. And hearing this, the disciples have at least some peace about what's going on here, about this vision that is happening before them. Hearing that holy name, Peter calls out to him, Lord, if it is you, let me come to you on the water. I want to do what you're doing. Who doesn't? How often have you wished that you could walk on water? I mean, that would be so cool, right? Peter cannot step out of the boat, though, unless he's called. He cannot step out on the boat unless he's called, unless Jesus issues that divine command, come to me. He cannot get out of the boat. We cannot follow Christ unless he has first called us. Because faith is a terribly hard thing, isn't it? Faith is terribly hard. It's inexplicable. It asks us to believe what is hidden from our eyes. All sorts of things get in the way of faith. And we see this as, as Peter then steps out of the boat. At first he's doing all right. He's walking on that water. He's coming to Jesus. And then a gust of wind happens. Something knocks him off course, distracts his attention away from Christ. 
And what happens? He looks away and now he begins to sink. When I was sinking down, sinking down, sinking down. When I was sinking down, sinking down. And what does Jesus do? He reaches out his hand and he raises him up. Huh. Out of the chaos. From death, or the threat of death, Jesus reaches out his hand and he lifts him up. And he takes him to himself. And he brings him back into the safety of a boat. In the, in the old cathedrals of Europe, that those Gothic cathedrals, uh, you know, you got the long nave, right? The long nave that, that everybody sits in. And if you were to, uh, as the architects of that, uh, of that style uh, of, of church put this together, they're thinking about the theology of architecture in the church. And, and the thinking there was if you were to look up into the ceiling, it would be as though you were looking down into the hull of the boat. And they said that the, the church is like a boat that carries us over the storms of life and brings us to Christ. In, in, in uh, many of Scandinavian churches, including the church that uh, I grew up in, in the nave, there's this ship that hangs down from the middle. If you've ever visited, the, I know some of you have visited the church I grew up in in Solving. But you know that there's a ship that's just hanging from the middle of the, the church. Like, what's up with this? Well, what would happen? You know, Scandinavia, it's, all, it's a very seafaring peoples up there. And what would happen is when... when Sailors would come home from a long voyage. They would, uh, they would have a, a replica of, the sh of their ship made up uh, and, and brought to the church as a thank offering for God having carried them through, uh, through their voyage and br bringing them safely home. And that ship always points forward to, uh, to, to the chancel, to, to the altar, uh, be, uh, at s symbolizing how, kind of drawing on that symbolism of, of the church being that boat that carries us forward to Christ. Peter steps out in faith. Life gets in the way. He sinks down, and Jesus lifts him back up. We get distracted from faith. Things in life happen that cause us, cause us, bless you, cause us to drown, to sink, to feel as though the storms of life are overwhelming us. And Christ comes. He comes in his word. He comes in the sacraments. And he gives himself to you. He gets you, he takes us out of that storm and he puts us back in the boat so that we might continue that journey safely in his arms. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds guarded in Christ Jesus, our rock, our foundation, our boat, our boat to carry us through the storms of life. Amen. Let's stand and let's join in our hymn of the day, uh, number 423.
in the presence of God, each other, and the world, let us profess our Christian faith. We do so using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered as one in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, the world, and all people according to their needs. Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life. You are the true bread that comes down from heaven, sustaining us in body and soul. Feed us with the bread that is you, so that in both body and spirit, we would never be found wanting. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal Father, you call us to step out in faith and put our trust in you alone. As the gusty wind pulled Peter's eyes off of you, so it happens in life that things happen and we take our eyes off of you even if just for a moment, and we find ourselves sinking. Lord, when you find us sinking down, pull us back up close to you by your side. Renew us in faith so that we may have peace and joy in your presence. Lord, in your mercy. High Priest of Heaven, we pray for our call committee as they seek an associate pastor of youth, family, and educational ministries. We pray you would give each of them a discerning heart and mind as they are meeting with a potential candidate this weekend. We pray for whomever it is that you have in mind to come and join us in ministry, that they would be ready to answer when you call. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Savior of the nations, we pray for our elected leaders in every level of government, that they would work humbly and diligently to protect and promote peace within our city, state, and nation. We pray for the people of Venezuela in the midst of great civil unrest. We pray that a peaceful resolution would come quickly to them so that all may receive with joy their daily bread. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Great physician, there are many who are in need of your healing mercies in a variety of ways. We lift to you all those in our prayers, in our prayer list this morning, and all those whom we name now before you, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious Father, we commend all for which we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Trusting in the mercy of Almighty God, let us bow before the Lord and confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you and for his sake 
God does forgive you all of your sins. To all who believe in his name, he gives power to become children of God and bestows upon them his Holy Spirit. All who believe and are baptized shall be saved. Grant this, O Lord, unto us all. Amen. You may be seated, and we'll continue now with the collection of the offering.
Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our suffering, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness would give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup, and giving thanks, he blessed it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. This do in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death until he comes again. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. You may be seated. Communion today is by intention. Receive the wafer and dip it into the cup.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you in faith and keep you in His grace unto life everlasting. Amen. We join in our closing hymn number 467. Benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for a brief moment of announcements. A few things to highlight. If you are interested in the LA mission trip, please let me know today. Uh, we need to, as we need to get our spot reserved for that. Uh, also, uh, Lent is just about here. Uh, next week, uh, yes, next week Wednesday is uh, Ash Wednesday. We'll have two opportunities for imposition of ashes. Uh, yeah, the the following week. We, yeah, I said that right. Yeah. Oh. Oh, no, no, no. A week from Wednesday. Uh, 
I hear there's a lot of early risers, and so we will have a 5.45 a.m. drive through and position of ashes for those of you who may want to get that on your way to work. And we will all, but you have to promise me to come back in the evening. Because then we have at 5.45 p.m. is the service with imposition of ashes as well. Uh, and then following that is uh, we will begin our uh, Wednesday evening soup suppers. Uh, and Wednesday evenings we're doing something a little bit different. We are doing the in-between texts in Matthew's Gospel. So uh, texts that are in between what you hear from Sunday to Sunday is a text that we will be covering Wednesday evening. So be sure to come out for that to get a fuller uh, immersion into Matthew's gospel. Luke, go ahead. Hello, everyone. We have a youth leaders meeting today at 2 p.m., so please be there if you can. And then youth group will be 3 to 5.15 tonight because we have uh, Deacon Sean Jones there helping to lead the youth group. So please... If we can get all the youth there to see how they like him and he likes them, that would be great. Thank you. Pardon? Oh, no, 75 is not youth. Middle school and high school is youth. <laughs> okay. Just so you know, we, um, if you've got debt and debt is stealing your future. We're starting a financial peace class next Sunday, March 3rd at 1 p.m. in the choir conference room. If you've got questions, um, raise your hand if you've been through a financial peace class. All right, you see these hands? If you can't get to me, talk to these people around. They, they'll, they'll answer your questions about it or come and find me. Um, the sign-up sheet is out in the narthex on a little board, and there's a little card next to it that you can pick up, a little business card that reminds you what the time is, when it is, and it also gives you your online link. You need to sign up and order your, your, your materials as soon as possible. So it's a great class, and I encourage anyone who hasn't had it to come and get it. It's really great. Okay. Yes. No Wednesday Peace Bible study this week. Okay. Uh, are there any birthdays this week? Yeah, me. <laughs> All right, Mary Lee. Oh, oh, 75 tomorrow. All right. Very good. She's in the youth group. You know, some people never graduate, right? No. Uh, any other birthdays this week? All right, let's sing. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, and Jesus loves you. Uh, any anniversaries this week? None. Okay, go in peace and serve the Lord.